Hey everyone, welcome back to Epicenter Garage. Today is a crazy, crazy day. Okay, so you guys, I've got a little bit of a story for you. So I get a late night call from you know who, our good friend, Euro-Asian Bob. He calls me up and he's like, hey, are you in on a car venture? So I said, yes. I said, where is it at? It's like Texas, Florida, hoping so, Arizona maybe, you know? And he's like, Steamboat Springs. I'm like, so we're going to go pick up a car in Steamboat. You do realize that like Steamboat's a huge ski town and there's probably like four feet of snow. And he's like, yeah, 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 we'll be all right. We'll be all right. So I'm like, okay. He's like, I'm getting you a ticket. I am in Steamboat Springs, Colorado because Euro Asian Bob bought me a one-way ticket with him to come here to pick up a car, which I had no clue what we were picking up. He wouldn't even tell me. All he told me was that the tires were a little questionable and that was a very old car from 1980. But the, the, the hook to how he got me was the fact that he said this car is rare, very rare. And there was a homologated, quote, race car that we could drive back to Kansas. So I, I reluctantly, because he's helped me so much, I reluctantly said yes. And so we get there. He's like, bring a warm hat. And I'm like, in gloves. And I'm like, gloves. I'm like, dude, we're going to get out of the car, out of the airplane. Somebody's going to pick us up, take us there. We're going to drive this thing back. He's like, well, yes. He's like, we got a few, his car's got a few issues. And I'm like, oh man, here we go. This is, uh, this is going to be an adventure. And sure enough, the car does have issues. You know, it did. It, you know, it had a heater, but he failed to ask the guy if the, you know, I'm like, he's like, well, the heater has a problem. I'm like, Bob, you need to ask this guy. Cause it's literally, I looked on my deal. I'm like, Steamboat Spring is like 20 degrees there, 15 degrees. And He's like, hey, I'll ask him, I'll ask, I'll text him. So I, I get a text back from him or he calls me back. He's like, hey, it's, it's got a heater. I'm like, well, I know it has a heater. He's like, oh, well, the guy said it had a heater. I'm like, he's like, I'm sure it worked. And then of course he said, well, the other issue is we have some the tires. And I'm like, oh man, I'd like, it, it, he's like, it has tires, but they're, they're pretty old. They're probably from the 80s. So this car, he did tell me this car was parked in a mansion in Steamboat Springs. The house was sold. The title and everything that went along with the house supposedly and whoever bought the house just donated the car or gave the car to somebody that worked at this Ford dealership. So little things are starting to come out now about this and I'm, you know, this, the ticket's already been purchased once he starts telling me all this thing. So I can't back out now. Catch a flight out of Wichita at five o'clock. We get delayed, of course, like all flights now, get delayed in Denver. So we're sitting in Denver. It should have been a 45 minute layover in Denver, but no, you know, it's a, it's a two hour, which turns into a three hour. Sure enough, it had a gate change. So we're like, oh my gosh. So now we're running through the Denver airport, trying to get from gate, I want to think like gate nine to 37. We're thinking we're getting on some little prop plane, but no, it's actually a big jet flying to Steamboat. But what we didn't realize and what Bob didn't check is Steamboat Springs has an airport, but it's a tiny airport. And when I say tiny, I'm talking like prop jobs and probably private planes. No airline is flying into Steamboat, but where they do fly in is a, a town, I can't even remember, it starts with an H, which is 35 miles from Steamboat, and we're getting in at 11 at night. And this little old lady comes, bless her heart, comes walking over and she taps my legs like, do you gentlemen have a ride? She's the person I think goes around the airport to make sure that everybody has a ride so people aren't sleeping in their airport before they close the doors for the night. And I'm like, yeah, you know, my friend Bob, he's taking care of it. She's like, okay um you know but she's like things are things are gonna be you know uh, uh being locked up here pretty soon and so bob's like i know i know i know so sure enough no ubers no ubers are willing to come for to get us for less than I, it was well over a hundred dollars so luckily bob and we go up and there's a shuttle and there's a nice lady that's kind of like putting stuff she's like yeah we do have a shuttle um we can get you on the shuttle to steamboat so sure enough we pay a hundred, I don't remember quite, was well over what an Uber would have cost. I would say it's $150, probably the same price for our plane tickets, to take a shuttle in a nice big van from the airport to Steamboat. So we get on the shuttle and we make it in around, around midnight to this, to this hotel. So we get to the Ford dealer and I'm thinking this car would probably be in the back, in their service area or something like that. Nice and warm, ready to go for us. No. This was like buying a used car on some back lot in a shady part of town. This car was sitting, not out, not inside, but outside. It had been sitting there, looked for several days, frost all over this car. I'm even thinking the doors might be, might be, uh, might be frozen, but it has snow on the trunk. So explain this car. This car is one of 40 in the United States, maybe less than that, brought to the States. 1,600, a little over 1,600 worldwide. Only 40 sent to the United States. 
and there's estimated only about 200 road going examples left in existence today. Um, very rare car. A lot of these cars have already been shipped back to Europe because they're big with collectors uh, all over the world. But uh, so this a, is a 1980 yeah, 450 SLC 5.0. Okay. It's a homologation oh, yeah. So this is this is the 5.0, yeah, man. That, uh, Hold on. Let's double check. Yeah. Holy crap. Holy. This is a 5.0. Bob knows more about these cars than I do, but I know, you know, they've used in rallying, those cool things, how it linked Mercedes together. And well, it basically got Mercedes back to racing because in 1950, I want to say it's 55 at Le Mans, they had that huge action, 80 plus people were killed and Mercedes literally pulled out of racing. Basically, Mercedes got back into racing because a couple of guys within Mercedes built this car. It has aluminum, I want to say aluminum trunk lid, aluminum doors, and it was punched out to five liters, more horsepower and some other things, little transmission changes, a little as far as ratios, I believe, and then, or tuning. And then, of course, they rallied this car. So it does have an automatic in it, but you can Google it, get on Google, watch Mercedes 450 SLC 50 rally car. They sound spectacular. Will it even start? This is. Oh my this gosh. Is start. Oh dear. Okay, are we ready? Oh, we I don't ready? know. Oh, look at that interior. Velour. Please, please, please. The size of that steering wheel is enormous. Please, 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 please. Come please. on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on now. Come on. You pumping it a little bit? No. Give it a little, we got a little action. Come on, 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 come on. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It runs. You might not be as crazy as I thought. Uh, yeah, oh, that, look at that. That will be to be determined. Okay, that this is this is pretty darn cool. So I was really excited, but then and then I realized that we got to drive this thing. I want to say it was two and a half or three hours from Steamboat into Denver. Luckily, Bob said he had tires waiting for us in Denver. So all we had to do is drive on these crusty, cracked tires. Dude, this <laughs> might this might rip that freaking tire off. Coming, <laughs> these tires. Oh, good lord! Brian, you're shaking a little bit. I am shaking. I'm cold, but I'm maybe getting nervous. Maybe don't go inside the Ford yes, dealership that's where we're and wait with. for the heater in this puppy to walk, for, fire up. Hey, good news is it's on defrost and it's blowing. It is, look this at is the a wind. good sign. Oh my gosh. Oh, actually we need to get some air in these tires too. It's gonna be a dicey trip. <laughs> this is gonna be a dicey trip. Let's there see. is a ton of snow here. Hey, and Brian, video this here. Let's see if this thing comes we're out gonna, of the ice. We're gonna see if this thing will actually pull itself out of the ice. Here we go. Oh man. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, she's buckling down. That tire is low. Holy. It did, it's freezing, yep. Oh my gosh, yeah, that tire is, oh, that is, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So we drove it a mile down to the filling station, filled it up, no heater, mind you, still. And I'm sitting in the car while he's filling up. No heater, it is cold, so I dig out my hat and gloves and start to dawn on my my rally to Denver outfit. We just left with the car. We put 40 pounds of air in all of the tires. And now I'm going through my bag to dig out my hat and my gloves because the heater, although the car has been running for quite some time, the heater's not working and it is freaking cold. You can still see my breath here. Um, he's filling it up and I'm going through the gauges here, trying to make sure that Bob, he knows more about Mercedes a lot more than I do, but he's got this temperature gauge set on 85 and it, there's, there's no warm air come out of this thing. And we've got about two and a half, three hours to go to get to Denver, which Denver's still gonna be cold. So we're, oh man, I'm really hoping this heater, this heater fires up, I really do. We may have to stop by and get some candles. We head on out, make the trip all the way to Denver. We get to the tire place. We load the tires in the car and we head and we start. He's like, man, you got to Google a tire place. So I start Googling MapQuest in a tire place. And sure enough, we reach this place and they are so busy. I'm like, man, they're never going to get us in. Look at this. They got semi trucks around. Trucks are pulling in. We made it to Red Coat Tire. 
in order to swap all four tires over. So we got those old, old tires off and now we're getting ready to put new ones on. But this place is busy, busy, busy. I mean, these guys got a lot going on. So anyway, they're gonna swap these things over for us. And we're gonna get back on I-70. Um, but we go up to the guy and he's like, yep, no problem, we'll get them on. Give us about two minutes. They jack it up, three jacks, boom, lift it up. <laughs> pull the tires off, go in, mount them. We put in new valve stems in it and we're off on the races. It's running great. We got the new tires mounted. We had to stop for gas. I have no clue where we're at, but we're not in Kansas yet. We're still on I-70, but everything's running really, really well. Bub's in there digging. We had to pick a power pack up because we have no 12 volt power in both of our cell phones went basically completely dead and so we had to pick up a power jack or a power system which he's got rigged up everything is going really well the new tires thank goodness we got new tires mounted but the car runs and drives absolutely perfect really really nice you can take your hands off the steering wheel and it tracks straight right on down the road and uh, I've been behind the wheel for quite some time now and Bob's been checking all his messages and uh, trying to knock out some car deals along the way. Surprisingly, we got 19 miles per gallon for that old car. It hadn't been, he'd been sitting for God knows how long, I mean, at least 15 years in this in this house. How many miles on the odometer? Uh, we've 307. 307. We've gone 307. Did you 16. hit it when we went up? Yeah. So hey, we 307 got 19 miles a gallon. That's not bad. That's that's not bad. That's Go ahead awesome. and reset that again. That was We're in about the, to get a lot worse. And that was so in the I'm, mountains. I'm putting the hammer down. Make a fairly eventful trip on I-70. And, but all of a sudden at night, we hadn't checked the lights. And I turned the lights on. The lights kind of come on like a, like an old shed where it's like, whoa, the lights kind of have to heat up. They finally start to light up. Then next, the light, the headlights start kind of going in and out. Like, oh man. And Bob's of course on his phone looking for car deals on, you know, where or wherever. And he's like, oh man, what's, what are you doing? I'm like, Bob, I'm not doing anything, you know? And he's like, oh man, it might be our alternator. It could be a voltage regulator. So I just keep the RPMs up and we kind of bump the speed up a little bit now that we're on new tires and we let it ride that way. And sure enough, we're fine. I couldn't imagine what people on the coming traffic, it probably looks like we're flashing them, you know, deer ahead or something, but we made it all the way home uneventful. Of course, we didn't shut the car off at filling stations. We kind of, it was a fast pit stop. And we made it all the way back to Wichita. We made it in about, we headed out this morning at eight something and it's about 11 o'clock now. Stopped off in Denver, got tires mounted on this thing. Whew, that was a heck of a trip. Man, thanks for coming along. It's yep. So much fun. Absolutely. Just to share, because I do these things, these car quests or whatever you want to call them. And I yeah, usually about myself, sometimes Becky goes along with me, but you know, she's always got to kind of keep things uh, nailed down at the home for, you know what I mean? Yes. But uh, man, what, it just, I appreciate you coming along. It's so much fun. It's a trip I'll never forget. Oh, me neither. And I'm sure this will not be the last. The heater did start to work. Once the car started going down the road, I don't know what happened. Bob knows about more about it. He explained the whole deal talking about on these Mercedes, whatnot. I mean, it's, it's above, my, above my head, but the heater did start to work. It was very comfortable in that car. I'm telling you, I would drive. I would jump. If he called me up right now to jump in that car and head to California, pff, I'm there. It was so comfortable. I might sit in the back seat and go to sleep, but the heater worked and we were good to go and we made it. <laughs>